I get told off if I had too much garlic. How can you be told off for that? Well, because you know you're not with garlic breath. Oh no, no, my life, no, no, no. I'm immune. I've just eaten garlic my whole life. I think my mum had garlic coming out of her breast milk. You know, it's just like part of who I am. Nice. Hi everyone. Welcome to episode six of Nando's Bring the Heat Home. I'm Tim, head of food at Nando's, and joining me today from her own kitchen is singer-songwriter Joy Crooks. Hello, Joy, Tim. Welcome. Great to have you on board. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm very excited to learn how to cook Nando's. I'm not so excited because I'm scared that all my mates will see this and then ask me to start cooking Nando's for them, and I'm not taking any orders over lockdown. Well, I was going to say they can't come to your house, and uh, you know there, there is a fantastic delivery service for Nando. So I think you've got a good excuse. Yeah, there we this go. Is, you know, this is for close together. friends only. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's great to have you. And will you just tell us about what you've chosen to cook today? I've chosen to cook um, half of a medium chicken and uh, tender stem broccoli and sweet potato wedgies. Very nice. And is that your your normal? Go to order. I always try and like mix up what I get. Like when you guys were doing like the watermelon salad, I try to do that sometimes. And I've never had a griddled watermelon in my life, so you know I just try and live on the edge, really. Hey, nice to see uh, you exploring the menu. Yeah, I'd say I was pretty proud of myself for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, you know, you and I, we've um, spatchcocked our chicken already we're also going to make peritama sauce which is you know your go-to sauce so we are recreating peritama at home uh, i'm going to show everyone how to spatchcock a chicken so that um if you haven't done it before in order to keep ahead of time let's get our chicken into the oven and then i'll show the guys at home how to spatchcock and then um we'll get on to the wedges and the peritama and the broccoli cool so here's my chicken there's your chicken. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, oh, I bet you've been waiting to say that all day, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, will, I will show the guys how to spatchcock a chicken. It's not going to take that long. Okay, so at home, if you're watching, um, you're going to take your chicken, you're going to turn, it, turn her upside down so the breast is down on the chopping board. Then you'll need some good poultry shears or some really strong kitchen scissors and it's worth investing in them you can buy them online they're not expensive um, poultry shears or poultry scissors and then starting at the the parson's nose we're going to use that as a sort of whip guide so i'm going to go in with my scissors and just start cutting and i mean we are cutting through bone so it's going to get crunchy um, but it's not it's not that difficult and then once i've cut one side I'm going to repeat the other side. So just again, using the, the parsley's nose, which is at the, the back of the chicken, uh, as opposed to the neck end, I'm going to use that as a guide and just cut through and just chop out the backbone. So once the backbone is removed, we can put that aside, we can save that for stock. Um, you know, you don't have to throw it away. It's great for making chicken stock. Then I'm just going to turn the chicken over so it's lying on the board. And then, in a sort of um, movement of just using your hands, you're just going to press down and you'll hear a crack of the breastbone. And now the chicken is nice and flat and sort of looking like it's lying in the sun and doing a bit of sunbathing. Um, and that is, our, that is our spatchcock chicken. So what Joy and I did is we, we took that um, and we took about half a bottle of medium uh, Nando's marinade covered it all over, left it to marinade, and we're gonna roast it, or it is roasting in the oven, breast pressing up, lying down, wings tucked underneath, and legs um, nice and relaxed. So that is how to spatchcock a chicken, for those at home. Enjoy it. Can you tell me how your lockdown's been going? Um, it's been very up and down. I had such a good weekend though. Um, now that we can see like one person from obviously a distance outside, yeah. It's been nice to see my friends after such a long time and stuff like that. It's like one day you're like, oh my gosh, there's a global crisis happening and I'm having an existential crisis. And then the other day is just counting your blessings and feeling very excited by the prospect of lunch, breakfast and dinner. So what I'd like you to do is um, we're going to get the sweet potato wedges into the oven. Cool. Um, so if you grab your sweet potatoes and... Um, 
Joy and I have um, given these a wash already. We're keeping the skin on. Um, you know, the skin's delicious and it will keep the wedges together. If we peel it, they tend to fall apart for, for what we're doing. Um, and then all I've done is I've just taken the ends off. What I'd like you to do is lie your sweet potato, first one, down on the chopping board, and you're just going to split it in half lengthways. So you end up with wedges that look something like this. Yeah, my knife definitely isn't strong enough for this. These came out a bit thinner, is that okay? Yeah, look, look. There's no way you're going to get them all exactly the same. So some will end up being a little bit crispier. Some will be end up being, um, you know, a bit thicker. But it ultimately, that'll be that'll be fun. That'll be delicious. How have you been faring with uh, creativity? Has it been a good time, or have you found it a bit stifling? Um, I've been creative. I've been like, I've been overworked. Um, I've I just decided to like try and continue my my kind of my work schedule but from home and it's okay. been a little bit it's been quite strenuous so I've had to like actively take time out I guess the creativity side is difficult but I just don't believe that you know regardless of what your situation is and what's going on in the world I think there's always capacity to be creative I think creativity comes from the happiest moments the saddest moments the most difficult moments and so for me, it's not, you know, when I do feel not creative, it just means that I'm not being stimulated enough. Okay. And, um, and it's a good time to be stimulated because you've got all this time to read books and watch films and watch documentaries. So sometimes you have to ask, you know, what are you doing it for? And when you realise what your intention is and why you started what you do, it's generally because of something within yourself. And if you're not looking after yourself, it's kind of like, how do you expect anything else to kind of happen and, and it makes you realize that you may not be doing whatever you're doing or overworking for the right reasons so it's been really like helpful to just realize that and stop for a second you know yeah my wedges um, are all done okay so if you get your wedges into your into your tray into uh the roasting tray you're going to use yeah and then i'm just going to pour over a little bit of olive oil um and then using my hands i'm just going to Toss that together so that the oil is covered uh, all over the wedges. It's quite good to start them off with the skin facing down. Um, and the reason we do that is because the skin will stop them from sticking on the tray. Um, if, you put, if you put them cut side down first, you, you tend to see, even with the oil, that um, uh, some of the, the cut side will stick to the tray. Um, Right. If we start them off like this, then we can flip them over later and they'll be, um, they'll be absolutely fine. i tell you what, Tim, I've had so much more time to cook. That's one thing that I've really, really am so grateful of during this time is that I've been able to cook so much more than I usually would. What um, do you like cooking? What do I like cooking? Yeah. I kind of, it sounds like a, a crap answer, but I really like cooking anything that feels kind of homely. Um, so... Like, I have been cooking a lot of chicken cormas because I know that that's like a British favourite and my boyfriend loves it. And so I've been cooking a lot of chicken cormas. I've been cooking ramen. I've been doing... Um, I make like a really, really gorgeous, like from scratch spaghetti bolognese and I make it uh, vegetarian. So nice. it's like not as heavy. You've got a very uh, varied cultural background. Your mother was Bangladeshi. Your, your father was Irish. And do you find that, and you grew up in London, do you find that those influences come into your cooking or? Uh, Bangladeshi food is quite difficult to make and I enjoy the challenge and learning how to be as good as my mum and, and learning how to do my childhood dishes. Yeah. And I think that's what I mean by home food. It's kind of like I grew up with a lot of Bangladeshi food. And for me, it's really, really important to like, be able to recreate that so I can give that to my kids and we don't write anything down everything's taught by hand and just by, by mouth so yeah that's kind of the vibe am I opening my salt yeah if you get your peri uh peri peri salt for those at home if you haven't got any peri peri salt it's fine normal salt mixed in with a bit of cayenne pepper or smoked paprika or if you you know if you don't want the spices at all just salt and pepper absolutely fine you're just sprinkling that over the wedges um you know, we're just, just for a bit of seasoning. I like seasoning. I like my whole life to be seasoned. <laughs> I, think I'm quite, I think I'm quite a seasoned human being. And I think I know a few people that aren't, unfortunately. 
But so if you if you, if you were a spice, what spice would you be? Um, I'd be I'd just be I reckon I'd be turmeric. Turmeric, nice. I reckon I'd be turmeric because, right, let, hear, hear me out, I'd, I'd be turmeric because turmeric is definitely a bit of a nasty spice. It can stain you, it can hurt you, you know, it can make your eyes do this and uh, But also, it's really tasty. So I just feel like I'm a mixture of sweet and... And, you know, in the, in the right quantities, it's really good for you. You know, that's a, that's a proper immune system system boosting yeah, but, but um, emphasis emphasis on the right quantities yeah absolutely um so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the peri tamer sauce um and again this is this is a bit of a, a, a nando's at home hack um because we're we're using some existing ingredients rather than cooking it from from scratch but it's a pretty close um you know second to to the peri tamer that we have in the restaurants cool so ketchup into a bowl and um, I've got about four tablespoons of ketchup but I mean you can just give it a good squeeze if you like Joy. Um, I've got some honey, I've got some smoked paprika, we've got some um, Worcester sauce and um, we've got some lemon uh, that we're just going to do a squeeze of lemon and, and a bit of water just to thin it down and then we've, we've, we've nailed it. Okay, so I've got the ketchup in the, in there. I'm just taking okay. the wrapping off. Sorry, give me a sec. Yeah, no worries. So, funny. I've got about that much ketchup in a bowl. Nice, perfect. So into that, um, and you can use measuring spoons if you want, or we can do this by taste or by eye. And uh, as you know, write down recipes, and 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 it's more of a family thing. I think we should just go by taste. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm just going to put. A good splash of Worcester sauce in there. What what does a good splash mean though? It's like that. That's a good splash. So it's about a couple of tablespoons. Yeah. All right, cool. Listen, if if it's if there's too much in it, you can always add a bit more ketchup or a bit more honey. You just keep going until you get the consistency right. Cool. So I'm putting in uh, two teaspoons of honey. Roughly. Now, you, uh, th there's a lot of rumours flying around that there's a new album coming out this year, Joy. Is it some... I mean, like, maybe, maybe not this year, maybe next year at this point, just because we were in our recording process and obviously I didn't feel like it was safe to be going into the studio, even if it was... I only worked with a few people, but I just didn't feel like it was appropriate to be doing that. No, fair enough. So I stopped all the all the process. Um, and, and will um, anyone but me be a single on that album? It probably will be, yes. And I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I have to confess, I've been listening to it a lot. I can't stop playing it. Um, oh. Annie Mac gave it the hottest record uh, back, yeah, in, back yeah, in April. She, yeah, she did. How did that feel? Um, I always just get confused when people are nice to me and my records. So I just, it's like I don't really expect it. So it's quite, it was obviously lovely. And um, I've seen so many records that I love become the hottest record. So when I, when I got that, it felt really special. Um, the, the other two ingredients that we're putting into that peri tamer, um, a pinch of smoked paprika. Yes. Um, and then a squeeze of lemon. So with a squeeze of lemon, I mean, we're, we're I'm just, Cut off uh, a bit of one lemon, and I'm just just the tip. So it's again, it's um, about a teaspoon of lemon juice. Oh, so mine's still looking very. It's still a bit red. Okay. Can have a look. Let's have a look. We have bad. Still quite like red color. Okay. So and how? So the consistency of it should be. Um, oh, it tastes good though. Yeah, there you go. I wouldn't worry too much about the color because we, we won't get the color exactly the same as what's, um, what we get in the restaurant. But this is all about. I'm just going to put, I'm, get, I'm putting a bit more water, water. How do you pronounce this? Worcester. Worcester, Worcester sauce. Yeah, that yeah. water. Well, you can good. just cheat and say oh. Liam Perrins. Yeah, that. I'm putting a bit more of that in there because I want it to have a bit more of a sour taste. Uh, you know what I, what I like about this is. 
it, this is all about personal preference. You know, you taste it and you go, well, a bit more lemon juice, a bit more Worcester sauce, smoked paprika, you play around with it or honey, depending until you get it right. I'm just gonna add a splash of water in mine because we want this to be like a glaze as opposed to a sauce. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you grew up in, in Elephant and Castle. Correct. And do you think that, you know, living in that area and, and, and where you grew up has influenced your music and your, your outlook on life today? Probably, yeah. I mean, it's such a, like, if you know South London, I think you are always, well, maybe not everyone, but for me, I'm definitely a sponge to what my environment, whatever's around me. So growing up in Elephant Castle, if you know South London, you know how strong of an area it is here. It's such a strong culture yeah. and there's a strong sense of community. So I think naturally you just get, you're a sponge to that and you just soak in the whole area and, and the people and the mannerisms and the way you conduct yourself and the way you carry yourself and the way that you don't carry yourself <laughs> and the things that you don't say. So yeah, definitely it's been such a huge influence coming from this area for sure. And I guess because my music's so personal, whatever I am is a reflection of, whatever my music is, is a reflection of me, really. Yeah, because you, 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 know, you don't hold anything back when you, in, in your music and in terms of what you want to talk about, I think you're very open with your, um, you know, where you've come from and, and the problems you've faced, uh, you know, around mental health. And obviously, uh, you know, last week was mental health week. You know, is it, do you find that actually now, I mean, it seems like being able to talk about it and being able to discuss problems that you've got, and you know, I think we're all touched by, by mental health in one, one way or another. Um, whereas, you know, 10 years ago, it wasn't discussed at suffering. all. If you're not suffering, then someone else around you suffer, suffering that you may love or you, you know, or you may have grown up with. So I think inevitably affects everyone. And I think that, you know, in, when people say, oh, are you nervous or are you da 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 I just think, honestly, no, because I feel like it's a conversation that's needed, has, has needed to happen for such a long time. And I think when people are like, oh, well, that's not strong, that's da 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 I don't need this, I don't think therapy does this. I'm just like, you know what, fine. But that's kind of like, to me, it sounds like there are preconceived ideas. Men should be allowed to speak about how they feel. And, and obviously suicide rates within men is just unbelievable. So I think the sooner that we all speak, the better. You know, the more lives it saves, the more lives it saves that haven't even been born yet, you know? All right, so um, am, I, am I doing broccoli now? Yeah, uh, listen, what we're going to do is um, we're just going to have a quick check on the on the chicken okay. and the sweet potato wedges. And what we're going to do with the wedges is just now, just take them out, flip them onto a side, because um, we want them to roast evenly, but I think they've probably had long enough. So let's start with the wedges. Woo! How are they looking? I mean, they're smelling great. Oh, well, that's good. So I'm just, I'm just literally going to flip them over onto one side off the, off their skins, um, so we can get some colour on them. And the thing with the wedges is, like, you so look at them and think, are they going to be ages? Them, are you flipping them so the orange is on the, is the orange bit is on the? Yeah. So I'm just, so there's a cut side down. So, um, so the skins are on the, on the side. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So just like that. Because I wear so much jewellery, every time I open the oven, I just get burnt on my neck because my all my necklaces just get really hot. So if anyone's suffering from that at home, just hold your necklaces when you open an oven. And you just learned something from me today, so there you go. No, absolutely, yeah, good. You've got a lot of support and trying to work on um, young South Asians and giving them a chance and a, and a step into, into your world. So looking at scholarships and mentoring programs. Will you tell us about that? Well, I got, um, I'm part of the Days 100 list and they are, this year they're giving out a grant to the people on the list, whoever, one second. Yeah. Boy. So whoever gets nominated or uh, you, it's like a voting system and whoever gets to the top or three people that get to the top um, with the most votes can uh, can embark on whatever idea or project they had in mind. So we came up with a project of setting up a mentorship and creative scheme for young South Asian people like myself a couple of years ago. And the reason why is because there is a disproportionate amount of 
um, or lack of South Asians in the entertainment industry. You know, if we're looking at music and we're looking at super, super huge mainstream South Asian artists, you know, who's, a, for example, a female, I can think of MIA. Yeah. And like that was, you know, her prime, not that prime matters, but, you know, she was very, very, very prominent like yeah. 10 years ago. And that, to me, says so much about entertainment industry full stop within the South Asian community in the West. I think that it's really um, important to be able to show young people that they can make work out of it. And it, they don't necessarily need to be mainstream. They can do whatever they want, but creativity and having a creative job is allowed. I think legacy is so important. I think being able to lift people is yeah. something that I've always wanted to be part of my job. And because music, you can you can so capably lift people with it. It's like, why not? Why just, yeah, I just don't think it's fair to be selfish in that way. So listen, just while we, while we keep chatting, um, we're going to have a look at our chicken. I don't know if you managed to have a look at your chicken when you were. No, yeah. <laughs> Holding my necklaces before I do. Okay, so my chicken is starting to look lovely. It's, it's getting golden brown. Um, yeah, mine's brown. Yeah. It's not far away, actually. I would say that that's another another five minutes, and we are we are pretty much good to go. So okay, cool. about, about so should we? On a Tuesday. Are we doing broccoli now? We're gonna we're gonna prep our broccoli, um, yeah. and what we're doing with the broccoli is really simple. We we've got some long stem broccoli um, which has just been washed, and we're taking a garlic clove which we're gonna slice really thin. And then we're putting a little bit of olive oil and butter in a, in a saucepan, uh, put the garlic in for a minute, and then adding the bro broccoli, putting the lid on. There's no water. Um, and then we're just going to let the steam of the pot with the butter and the olive oil cook the broccoli. Because this, the long stem is so tender, it will cook really quickly. And then at the end, we're just going to squeeze over some lemon juice and, and some grated lemon zest. Um, Do you mind if I um, put more than one garlic clove in there? Uh, I don't mind at all. Right, cool, because <laughs> I, 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 might, I, I might join you in, and, and, uh, in, in adding, adding more. I love garlic. I've got like three and a half cloves. Okay. Is that you, my... You're a garlic fan? I just, like I said, I'm a seasoned human being. Okay. <laughs> I get told off if I had too much garlic. How can you be told off for that? Well, because, you know, you're not with garlic bread. Oh no, no, my life, no, no, no. I'm immune. I've just eaten garlic my whole life. I think my mum had garlic coming out of her breast milk, you know, it's just like part of who I am. Nice. Um, so the, the thing with the garlic cloves, what we want to do with this broccoli is, is slice it really thinly. So, you know, yeah. uh, it just in, slice the whole clove into slices as thin as possible. Um, okay, you don't, you don't. Got, you don't want dices or anything like that. We don't want dices. We, we want to see that sort of, you know, that shape of the garlic clove. Yeah. I'm going to lie it down and I'm just going to slice it across okay. that way. Okay. You're, um, you, you're on plan to go in, on tour with Harry Styles. Correct. Are you, uh, yeah. How are you feeling about that? Well, I'm not really sure what's going to happen because we were, we were meant to be touring like now. Um, and obviously because of the situation at hand yeah. with the world, it couldn't happen. And um, so I'm not, I think he's going back on the tour next year and we have to see if I'm going to be able to go and do it. Um, in the sense that just timing and stuff, it's really hard to time for a year's time, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, he gave me such an incredible opportunity and I just want to make sure that someday it can happen, you know? Uh, well, I hope, I hope it goes ahead. Do you, do you like being on tour? Um, I love it, personally, because I actually really get on with my band and the people that I work with. I think it can be a little bit difficult at times. And, you know, you and I like to cook at home and we like proper cooking and you can't always find the best food on tour. And I'm gluten intolerant, yeah. so it's a real pain. OK, how are you doing on your garlic? Yeah, it's, it's done. I've done it. Good. OK, so the, the, the next thing we're going to do is... Um, uh, I've got the rest of the lemon that I, you know, use some of the lemon in the periclamer. The rest of it, I'm just going to take the zest off. Um, and then when it comes to it, we're just going to squeeze it over the, um, over the broccoli. But I'll just, just zest it onto a chopping board so that we're, we're ready. Um, and then I think the chicken can come out of the oven. 
and then we are, um, you know, we're, we're, we're in good, good shape. How do I get a lot of zest up here? Um, I'm just using a normal. What have you got, a grater? Yeah. Yeah, so you want to try and use the fine, the fine side of the, the, the grater to get the zest off. Yeah, it's not looking great. I'll tell you that for free. This, like, look at, look no, at the no pun intended there. Oh, yeah, that, that, look, look, that's very similar to mine. No, yours, no, yours is a lot prettier. Come here, let me see. Oh. Yeah, no, no way. It's not similar at all. This one is making the, this one's making the zest look kind of like. Listen, it's, it, it, this is really not about what it looks like. And um, this zest is about is just zest. getting that. Go on, go and tell them, Tim, zest is zest. Zest is zest, you know. You're not going to tell me that my zest looks better than your zest. Um, I'm going to take my chicken out, George. Okay. Because that is... So, for those... You know, that oh, took no time at all. Woo! Yeah. How's yours? Um, bear with me. Okay, do you want to see mine? I want to see, I want to see your chicken. Right, okay. All right. Will you... um? Will you tell us about Glastonbury? Was that? Oh, that looks perfect. Yeah, yours is yours has got yours is even more lovely and golden than mine. How did you do that? Let me see yours. Mine's a bit. Mine's a bit spotty. Um, I maybe I've just got the touch. I think you've got the touch. Yeah, I think I've just yeah. got. The touch. Okay, well, we'll put it down to touch. Um, Glastonbury was great. I didn't get as drunk as I thought I might, and um, people were lovely and kind of. It was like a once in a lifetime experience that I'm never going to forget. But it was kind of like such a whirlwind because it was like, what do you mean I'm doing a treehouse session? This is what I used to watch when I was young on TV, and then I'm doing it myself. So it was a bit mad, but I really, yeah, I just really enjoyed it and. It was just, I've never been to such a big festival in my life, you know. When you were growing up, who were your musical idols? Who were you looking up to? Mm. Like Nina Simone, um, Billie Holiday, uh, Kate Nash, like uh, Gregory Isaacs, like loads of different. I've, I'm like, both from like jazz to pop to reggae to like, nice. um, like Latin yeah. music playing in this area it's like Cuban music and it's just all such a big mix. I just really like music in general so I kind of just listen to everything and I think everything is an influence if you love it you know yeah there's a there's an album called uh, Lady Sings the Blues Billie Holiday yeah yeah that's, that's one of my favorite albums you know, yeah I've just, so I've just read the book actually have you read her book called Lady Sings the Blues I haven't no no I haven't she wrote a book called Lady Sings the Blues okay uh, it's phenomenal it's yeah, like, no. it's unbelievable. And it's really tiny, so it's easy to read, but it's just like her life and her story is just beyond me, to be honest with you. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that delivered. I'm going to get that book. Right, what are we doing with this? Bro are we doing broccoli or chicken? Okay, so now we're, we're sort of starting to pull everything together. So um, the, we're just going to check on our sweet potato wedges. Um, okay. And then what we need to do, the chicken sitting out, we're just going to leave that rest for a minute because we need to, we then need to split the chicken. The cool. broccoli is the last thing we're going to cook because it'll cook in about two minutes. Cool. Um, and we, we kind of want to have that ready and the chicken can rest and the sweet potatoes can rest while we do it. Are we flipping, are we flipping the uh, sweet potato wedgies? I'm just having a look at them. They should be starting to brown a little bit um, and blister. Yeah. And how yours are looking? Yeah, they're looking good. Okay. So yeah, you can you can just flip them over onto the other side. So oh. you know the one side that hasn't been facing down yet, the the cut side. Um, and they're um. Yeah, they're looking good. I'm gonna just, oh, they're looking. They've, they've only got about five minutes left. So you can, you can probably, if you feel them with your fingers, you can feel that the sweet potato is soft. So they're actually cooked. But what we want to do now is just get a little bit more color on them so that that outside edge becomes uh, a bit crunchier or a bit more, bit more golden and has some texture to it. Yeah, we like crunch in this house. Yeah, we like crunch. 
um, but they are going to be they're going to be delicious. And is there anyone that you would like to work with next? Really like to work with a woman called Santi Gold. Okay. Um, she's just so talented and so like. Just like, I don't, you can't even put a finger on what genre she makes. She just makes like amazing music. So I just love to work with her. Um, and I feel like I could pick her brains on like so many things. And I'd love to work with like Kendrick Lamar. I'd love to work with Sir. I'd love to work with Little Sims, which will eventually happen. I would love to work with, God, I'd love to work with like loads of, I'd love to work with Quincy Jones. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, would, that would be amazing. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is get your chicken onto a onto a chopping board. Cool. If you can. So, for those at home, I mean, if you if you were barbecuing uh, or cooking this on a on a barbecue, this would be absolutely fine. You wouldn't do anything to it. Um, this then you could do this the day ahead, uh, and then leave it, and then when the barbecue's hot, you just reheat it on the barbecue until you get a nice colouring on the on the skin, probably not directly over the coals. Um, there's, there's a bit of um there's a bit of like residue in this in this in the well, bit. Yeah, do so you? what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the chicken in half and then just put it back into the into the pan. Um, so the half that you you you're gonna save for later, um, just leave it sit in sit in those juices. Um, I've got the, the breast side up with the legs facing me. Oh, legs are facing you, right, okay. Yeah. And then all I'm going to do is sort of directly down the middle, um, so between the two breasts, I'm just going to run my knife. And you'll find, that, you'll find the cartilage, and your knife will naturally go down one side of the cartilage. And it, it's going to take a bit of effort to get all the way through. So you, you might need to press quite hard, because there, there is a bit of bone and cartilage at the, at the bottom. How's it going? I mean, my knife just isn't, I don't, I broke my knife sharpener recently, so it's been a bit of a pain, but there we go, done. Done. Okay. Uh, let's, I move the wedges first. Okay. Mine are, yeah, my, my, my wedges are looking. Are you looking crispy? Well, look, they're not, they're not going to be super crispy, but they should have some nice golden uh, colour on them. Mine are nice. Should so, I take them out? Yeah, take them out. Mine are looking good too. So they're nice and golden brown. I'm just going to show those with that. Mm. Look at that. Ooh. Um, um, so sweet potato wedges, you can turn the oven off. You could keep your wedges in the oven and just turn the oven off. That will keep your wedges warm. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to grill our chicken and then Lastly, we're going to do the broccoli because we want that broccoli to be really fresh and, and, and get into that straight away. Yeah, when it's not fresh, it ain't the one. Okay, it so how, how hot do you want this griddle? Um, so we want it on a medium to high. You know, we, we, we are, we're going to show the chicken to the griddle pan as opposed got, to cooking it. Uh, we're going to baste it with the peri tamer sauce that we've made. We're going to oh. turn it over both sides, get a bit more color on there. Get the sauce to caramelize slightly, and then that's it. Okay, fantastic. Do, am I am I just putting this whole half chicken in there? Yeah, we are gonna we're oh. just gonna put that half chicken, the breast side down, so the skin side is gonna go face down first. Okay. So we're gonna and it's literally only gonna be in there for about a minute, minute and a half, just to get some color on the skin. We don't want to burn the skin, but just to crisp it up a little bit. Then we're going to flip it over. And then just cook the other side to get some heat through. But that's the, the sort of. Where do we, really where do we add this? Where do we add the sauce? We're going to add the sauce um, just before we put it into the pan. So okay. in fact, you while the pan is heating up, you can take your peri tamer. Yeah. And just using a spoon, you're just going to brush it. You're glazing it basically. So. On the chicken. You're just using it over the chicken. So the whole chicken, you're just doing a nice glaze over it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that looks happy. Looks happy. Good. You like can, happy. I put it on the, can I put it on the inside? You can put it on the inside, but you can do that once we once we turn the chicken over and put it in the grill pan, we can do it while it's in the grill pan. Oh, that sounds great. This is looking amazing. How's it smell? Smelling. Oh, I can't lie, this is so good. 
obviously if you're at home and Perry Tamer is not your not your source um, and you're a loser any, any, <laughs> you're not a loser <laughs> If you want to go hot sauce, medium sauce, you can put that over. Now's the time to do it. Um, there's no, uh, yeah, there's no, no wrong, wrong choice of sauce. How hot's your grill pan? It's not hot enough. It's like it's not hot. hot it's hot, okay. but I like. Do you want it? Do you want it proper? Do you want it proper? We want it hot. So yeah, yeah. while we're waiting for that to get hot, let's just get the olive oil. So a good glug of olive oil and uh, a knob of butter, and let's start warming that through. Now we don't want to. We don't want to. Wait, I'm putting this the the butter and the olive oil in the grill. But no, butter and the olive oil is going to go in the saucepan for the broccoli. Yeah. yeah. All right. And are we putting the heat on for that saucepan or not? Let's put the heat on for that saucepan. Okay. How high do you want it? Uh, we don't want that too too high, so we want that on a sort of medium to low. Oh, okay, you've got numbers. Put that on a four, a three or four for you. Okay, I'm putting my chicken in. All right. Well, thanks for telling me. Is it my? Shall I do it as well? Yeah, you do it as well. So okay. the breast side breast, down. Breast side down. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then. Yeah. If your if your butter is melted. It's melted. Just, yeah, just turn that heat off once the butter is melted. Um, but drop the garlic into the saucepan with the butter and the oil. But take it off the heat. So we've yeah. just got that. I turn the heat off. Yeah, so we, we, you know, the butter and the garlic is just doing its thing while we finish the chicken. Okay, so with this chicken in the pan. Right, what am I doing? Am I flipping the chicken? We, before we flip the chicken, we're just going to put a bit of paratama on the side okay. that's facing up now. Okay. Yeah, just like we did. And then I think we're ready to turn it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to turn mine. So I've got some lovely dark grill lines on the, on the skin. And just where it's, um, how's yours? Yeah, I'm going to call them grill lines. It might just be burns, but... Well, if it's... A, no, it, it'll, it'll go dark or, you know, you'll get some black spots in some places. But turn it over. Turn your chicken over. I've turned it. I haven't done it already. Have you turned it already? Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to give that, that side another 30 seconds and then put it onto a plate. Okay, I think she's good. Okay, so that is my, I'm just showing the guys at home, that is the half chicken. That's what mine's looking like, Joy. That's what mine looks like. Amazing. Yeah, perfect. So we are going to finish the broccoli and then we've got everything ready to, to serve it. Oh. So if you just put the, put the heat back under the broccoli, okay, uh, well, under the, sorry, under the pan with the butter and the, the garlic. What heat do you want? Um, we now want um, probably a four or five for you. Cool. Right, it's getting and hot. I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to put a pinch of salt in, in with that. And, yeah. and the, the long stem broccoli is going straight in. Um, and just give it a bit of a shake. And what will happen is that the, yeah, the moisture will start coming out of the broccoli and that will stop the garlic from burning. With the lid on and the, the pan, I'm just going to give it a bit of a shake, Joy, just yep. to, you know, get that garlic and butter around everything. I've started to like... Is it bad to triple glaze the chicken? This is what I've been doing. It's, it's, there's, there's no such thing as bad glazing. Okay, so um, Rossi's looking happy. Yeah. I mean, this won't, you know, this won't take long. I, I like, I like my long stem broccoli with a bit of crunch. I don't know yeah, me that. too, me too. Okay, so we're going to just leave that another 30 seconds, I think, and then we're going to add the zest of the lemon and the lemon juice, because we don't want my garlic to burn, as you said. Okay, I'm going to add the zest of the lemon. Cool. Uh, so the zest of lemon going in. And then 
the juice of the lemon going in. Lid back on. Yes, I think good. Uh, and then if you've got if you've got some fresh pepper, a, a, a grinding of fresh pepper at the end is also good too. Okay, I'm taking my wedges out. And I think my broccoli is done. Oh. Turning that off. I've turned that off. Yeah, perfect. So I've got half a chicken on a, on a plate. Um, I'm going to put a pile of sweet potato wedges on there and the broccoli. I'm, I'm making it for two people, this half chicken. So how should I cut this chicken? Um, well, what I would do is uh, if you're making it for, for two, yeah. It depends. Do you like, do you prefer breast meat or do you prefer um, the leg? I actually like leg, but breast is quite, I'd like a bit of breast as well. So, so it's, it's the all time question, isn't it? Breast or leg? Yeah. Because I've got a leg here, I've got a breast and I've got a wing. So I'm just going to chop all three. How does that you, sound? Well, I, I would say that half chicken is yours and the other half is uh, for whoever you're cooking for. Um, yeah, but that's greedy for lunch. All of that. Do you like? Do you like afternoon naps? Because you should probably start napping if you're having a whole half chicken for lunch. Well, of course, I don't have afternoon naps. Well, just stop it. What are you talking about? Yeah. We all found out your secret. <laughs> all right. Cool. So all right. I've got a pile of sweet potato wedges and my broccoli. I'm big into presentation. I can't do ugly meals. Should I put extra curry salt on there? You know what? It's entirely up to you. Um, I might just. And mine don't need it. I think I put, put quite a bit on in the beginning. All right, we've got the broccoli. It's looking healthy. Just adding a bit of that um, green colour that uh, we didn't know we needed. Oh, God. Right, so my presentation's out the window because I'm hungry. Um, but it's looking really lovely and it smells insane. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so, does, so does mine. Um, Are you hungry? I am. I'm really hungry. I'm, re I'm really hungry. And, and looking at it now, that's a, that's a good looking plate of food. Um, thanks for choosing these. No, well, thanks for... Thank you for teaching me how to become everyone's favourite friend. Because now I'm at Nando's, can't I? So everyone, I mean, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised. If, I know my neighbours were like, well, I saw you're doing this Nando's thing. I was like, well, you know what? If there is some left, I might, I might just feed you. What have you got there? Oh, you, you've got, you're going Perinase. I don't usually do Perinase, but you know what? It's an occasion. I'm with a, I'm with a Dutch New Zealand dish kiwi man, and why not just perinase? Why not, why not have some mayonnaise or some perinase? Yeah. All right. So taste test. I mean, you've already okay. started, so I might as well. Yeah. Just well, you know, yeah. I couldn't wait any longer. I'm going on the wedges. The wedges are incredible. You know what I like about the wedges is that, I mean, you got that, you got the skin, but they, you know, they're. They're soft and yet there's, oh, yeah, I could eat done, those all day long. You've done this a few times. Usually I'm just silent. If I'm silent, it means it's good. All right, is it chicken time? Yeah. All right, cool. Let me just take you on mine. Mm. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, oh, my God, it's so juicy. Proper juicy chicken. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that is the great thing about spatchcock is that you... You cook everything at the same time and it just retains its juices. But the, the important thing as well is when you finish cooking, it's just to leave it to rest. I mean, you know, people, people very often forget about resting, but 10 minutes and all the juices redistribute around the, around the, the meat. It's so good. So, Joy, we've had, we've had a couple of questions popping in from, uh, from fans who are watching. Um, and uh, or I've sent, sent in their, their questions for you. So, so, Joy, have you got any advice for, you know, some of your younger fans who are thinking about getting into the music industry, following your path? 
I would learn how to say no, <laughs> understand your ground. And also just to laugh, just to have a sense of humor. I think when I'm being harsh and I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I think it's almost, it can be annoying, but I think also just being able to laugh it out and, and, and carry a sense of humor and don't take yourself too seriously while you are taking yourself seriously and you're standing your ground is a really important balance to have, especially yeah. as a woman. I mean, like you guys get away with being all sorts, whereas we kind of have to keep our together. So I just kind of keep it happy, keep it snappy, keep it funny, but stand my ground and take absolutely no, the meaning of the word no. I think that's the most important thing for me. So another, another question that's come through, uh, Joy, is about the stories that you tell through your, your songs and your, your songwriting. Um, I mean, I wouldn't even know where to start. I just, I try and just be as honest as possible. I have a song called No Hands and I'm talking about the second date with my current partner and we're like, I'm talking about like meet me southeast on a downbeat with your khaki string vest because he was wearing like this gorgeous khaki kind of pilot string vest on the date um, and we're drinking whiskey and we're playing cards and that's like has to be part of the song. So I think for me when you're storytelling songwriting I think it's really important to add all the kind of rough around the edges details yeah. to kind of make it come to life you know what yeah. did it smell like what did it look like what were they wearing what day was it what street were you on why you know um that's how i write songs that's not how everyone writes songs but i love storytelling joy it's been wonderful having you today and cooking with you uh I've, yeah I've had, I've had a great time i really enjoyed it and we've you know i think we've created a delicious looking plate of food so I am very, very much looking forward to my uh, my lunch today. No, I'm like extremely, extremely grateful of you teaching me all of this. And I am literally going to be the friend that everyone wished they had because now I can make Nando's chicken and it's juicy and I know how to spatch cock and it's looking amazing. So thank you so much, Tim. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure. It's been, it's been wonderful having you on. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much.